Well, today I'm here going for a mudlark with Ted Sandling, who is the author of the very inspiring book, A Mudlark's Treasures, London in Fragments. And it's a book that I absolutely love because there's a previous version of it, but Ted's going to tell you about that later. And we are here and we're hoping to find some wonderful fragments of history ourselves. That is right. We are here. I'm just overjoyed to be my working with you again, Nicola. It has been far too long. It has, and it's brilliant to see you, Ted. And I'm, I've got to mention, you're also pretty nifty because I've seen it on your Instagram at this parkour, you know, when you sort of <laughs> run up walls and do little backflips and stuff. And I am hoping that you're going to do some kind of, you know, exciting backflip type thing down these stairs. I, I no. you <laughs> might be disappointed <laughs> with that. I think it will be a sedate mudlark. Okay, well, if you change your mind, I'll be here with the camera. A wig curler. A WB wig curler. Oh, a wig curler. That's fantastic. So, um, well, half a wig curler. These are just amazing. I love them so much. They are uh, 17th century, though. Yeah. Stuck they... in Samuel Pepys's wig. Um, so they would be the same on the other side, like an hourglass. And all of the ones I found have WB on them. Yeah, I found one with WB and I looked it up and that's the most common. common. He, there was obviously yeah. somebody or, or people who were prolific in making wig curlers. Um, yes. I started to look into wig curlers when I found my wig curler. Yeah. And I mean, they used to wear wigs to cover up a multitude of sins ah, like diseases and yeah, yeah. what have you. It's quite a fascinating subject. So brilliant find. I remember um, reading in Pepys' diaries about his um, response to wigs. And it was pretty much in the course of a year where he saw the fashion beginning mm -hmm. and was horrified by it and just thought it was this decadent, terrible thing. And l later on in his diaries, he writes about going into the barber to have his hair shorn, yeah. ready for his first wig. And it's a complete conversion. And it's very interesting, I think, the way in which fashion can overwhelm you. You know, you, yeah. you think you're resisting it and suddenly it seems the most natural thing in the world to cut all your hair off and <laughs> start putting on a, a pompadour. But this, this is marvellous. I'm yeah, really pleased to that. is. That. Well done. You're well, on fire, you Ted. Much. Well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so, here in this old mud here, we have the most beautiful piece of metal poking out. <laughs> oh, yeah. And not only is it gorgeous, it's sardines. <laughs> sardines in oil. And sardines, ancient is sardines. It sardines. I think it's sardines. Don't you think it's yes, sardines? It, yeah, for a minute I thought it said Ritre, but it's not. No, it's is sardines. You're absolutely right. Oh, it would have right. been better. <laughs> that could, is lovely, though. Because, because vintage sardines are a, are a delicacy. It's funny because oh, I find so am I many. Slice my fingers. Um, open? Yeah, hang on. I'll, I'll help you with my with my trowel. <laughs> I often find so many fish paste pots. Have you ever found such a good sardine tin? No. And I'm actually, I'm reading a book to my son right now called The Explorer, where, which is some children lost in the Amazon rainforest. What, and do they eat? Oh, here we go. No, look. they find Whoa, an ancient look at that. sardine tin. Oh no, you're they joking. Do. They, they find... find an ancient sardine yeah. tin? So I'm going to bring this home to him. And the, on the floor of the Amazon, <laughs> they see an that? ancient, and it gives them hope. So they're, they're on an aeroplane that crashed crashes. There are four wow, children. How extraordinary that you've now just come down here and found a start. Oh my a sardine God, look at that sardine. That's me. I love that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> have to find out who made it. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> she said grabbing it from him. Yeah, you grab. So, no, I'm just still wondering. Oh, yes, look, they're actually, um, <gasps> yes, something alimentaire. Oh, this is fabulous, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? And it's just so... give it a rinse That's off a and then idea. we can have and a closer maybe look at it. Maybe it's gradually turn it down. Um, How very exciting is that? It's obviously uh, a lot posher than the people who used to just uh, take their spoon to a fish paste pot at lunchtime. And I am, uh, I just don't want to give myself tetanus with an accidental no, slice. No, no, that wouldn't be a good idea. Oh, that's marvellous. So, Conserve, Conserve. V, we've got V. Oh, we've got <laughs> Thames. Can you see the uh, maker? Is it? Um, yeah. 
Let's have a look at the end. Yeah. Okay. In our roundup and, and just see what it is. That's 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 beautiful. Right. Well done. Thank you very much. I've never been so excited about a sardine tin before. <laughs> well, you, you got me very excited too. <laughs> it's a pretty good sardine tin. Right. Well, I've just seen Bart Simpson over here. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's not Bart. Kind of looks like Bart though, doesn't it? I think that might be from like uh, Roblox. Oh, really? I oh, I see. Exactly. I'm not up to date with Roblox. <laughs> I don't know exactly. But... <laughs> so I can find a couple of things over here that are very worn, but also really uh, revealing. So these are triangular pins of biscuit of, uh, of clay. Yep. And they're really an important part of the delftware making process, of delftware uh, firing. They're triangular pins that would sit inside what's called a saga, yep. the sort of uh, big rough pot uh, in which delftware pottery was fired, or more than delftware, but in particular for this story, delftware pottery. And sagas would have, Delphi sagas would have triangles cut in them through which these would be inserted. And the plates and things would be resting very lightly on the, the apex of that triangle so that the, the glaze didn't stick to mm. anything as it was being fired. So finding these here shows our proximity to, you know, 18th century Delphi potteries, which is fantastic. This area here is just filled with the detritus of a delftware pottery. So lots and lots of biscuit that has all gone wrong. You can see there a bit of glaze that's just oh, yes. melted really badly. So they've many, discarded it down here. This is all discarded. Many more pieces of saga. You can get some fine biscuit too with a different, um, a different body. So here's a nice piece of delftware. You can see the biscuit is exactly the same as was uh, lying around yeah. us. But this one is decorated. Can't quite tell what it is. A windmill, a vase of flowers. Oh, there's some really interesting bits here. So that's also been fired then and just discarded. Oh, that's here. Okay, so this is where where it, the fire got too hot in the kiln, oh. and the 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 uh, the clay has vitrified. It's turned into glass. That's a lovely spot, Nicola. That is nice, isn't and it? that is beautiful. It's that mossy green. It's like jade. Mm. Beautiful. Oh, half, half a triangle. So this is what I was talking about when I said those pins fit through a, a triangular hole in, in the saga. What have you found? Oh, I just love that. Just I look know, at the it's way. So tantalizing. And it actually, funnily enough, I've just seen another pipe ball down there. Oh, now oh. that's nice. I love Shall the way see? that it's in the mud there. Such a lovely picture. Let's see. So, is it going to be whole? Oh, it's that. No, yes. Oh, well, but it's lovely though. It's lovely, isn't yeah. it? Let's see yours. Right. Well, mine's just a bowl, but well, it's um, <laughs> it's a tiny one, look, oh. as well. So, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. Wonderful that you can find two things that are separated by. And very by, different age as well. Yeah, separated by a century or so. Yeah, at least. definitely, definitely. That's nice, it's quite it's, a small... It's delicate for a Georgian pipe bowl. Yeah. It's very delicate, isn't That's it? It's much nice. smaller than you'd expect. Nice, it might have a maker on the heel there. Oh, lovely. I'll put it in my bag and then give it back to you afterwards. She said, <laughs> squirreling it away. <laughs> okay. Let's see, another pipe. pipe. number three. Oh, that one does. That's look, nice. It's got a bit more to it. Well, that's the 1700s for sure. Yeah, definitely. And it's the right size and it's got a bit of a maker's mark on it. E, I think that's, that's lovely. It. That's nice. I always though. keep the mud in it just in case there's some tobacco at the bottom. Were you posting about that recently? I was. People sometimes <laughs> think it's because I want to smoke it. Now I have just seen a coin here actually. I have, but it's just being covered up slightly. Now it's around here. The water's uh, <laughs> oh, look at that. Is it a Victorian penny? I think it is, yeah. Ha! Lovely. Or, hang on, that's really um, Oh, that's quite that's might be 
No, that's a oh, that's a George, isn't look it? Look at that. That's a George the second, I think. Well done, Nicola. Well, you were talking about moving on to coins, <laughs> and so I duly did. I'm, re I'm really <laughs> glad that I was able to walk right over it without yeah, seeing. Yeah, perfect. I love seeing the um, profile. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, what a summer! That's a beaut. That is beaut. Here could be a milk bottle stopper. Oh, and it is, look. It is. It's purified milk. And it's from somewhere, but I can't quite read that yet. Yeah, an old milk bottle stopper. Lovely. So this is another nice one. Um, it is an old bottle. You can see here the, the string course, which is this rim of glass here, on which uh, you tie the, um, the cover to the bottle. And it's still got its cork in. It's a really big, hefty cork. I love it when you find the bottle next still with the cork in. Yeah. It's the thought that the last what? person who yeah, plugged it in there. They couldn't find their corkscrew, so they just <laughs> smashed the top off. <laughs> but this might be quite good for storing the pins that we find. What a great idea! It is now a pin cushion. Very resourceful. Always got to be resourceful. Many years ago, I saw a very well-dressed gentleman um, hunched down, rather like I am, and uh, just making a very repetitive movement, um, rather like I am. Yep. And I wandered over to see what he was doing, and he was picking up these pins and he had a, a tobacco bag, you know, like a golden Virginia yeah. plastic bag, which he was methodically putting pins into, finding them, because it's just, it's addictive. You sit in one place and you keep spotting more and more pins everywhere you look. And we spoke about how pins were used before you know, zips were uh, invented and whatnot. We spoke about how, how pins were used to fasten women's mm -hmm. clothes uh, and pin money. Husbands would give their wives pin money to buy pins. Um, and then he asked me if uh, I'd ever seen a £20 note. I'd seen £20 notes. <laughs> Just a few. Just, well, not that many. Um, but he asked me if I'd ever looked at them. And he took one out of his billfold and on the front of, this is the old £20 note, now it's uh, Turner, but there was a picture of um, Adam Smith mm -hmm. and a pin manufactory. It's a yeah. quote from uh, well, the Wealth of Nations. So I went home and I got the Wealth of Nations and very, very early on in the book, Adam Smith is describing how um, the process of making pins um, can be broken down and, and, and made more efficient. He, he says something like one man making a pin all on his own, doing all the processes, could make maybe 10 in a day. 10? But if you break mm -hmm. down, maybe it's 20, I don't know, it's a small number. If you break down the processes so that one man is pointing the pin and one man is uh, wrapping the head and one man is whitening it, so that you've got, I don't know, 10 people making pins, they can make 50,000 in a day. Gosh. And it's that sense of mass production, of the assembly line, of breaking things down efficiently, that led from there to the Industrial mm -hmm. Revolution, to, you know, to Henry Ford, to China, which is currently making however many millions of iPhones a day, mm -hmm. from these on the foreshore. That was so incredible to me that you can go from absolutely tiny things yeah. and you leap to world-spanning, you know, macroeconomical shifting stories. It's just incredible. Oh, what have you got there? I have just found this rather lovely little bangle oh, with nice. red and black incised dots. And I wonder if it might be Bakelite. I think it might be. Do you think it might be 1920s? Oh, it could be. Nice it's got a bit so. of age to it, hasn't and it? And it's kind of got that sort of Art Deco. Yeah. But it's very irregular. It's quite amateurishly done. 
It's not bone. It's nice. plastic. So, it's really cold. <laughs> what I've just found is this beautiful Ooh. little tessera right here. So that is a fragment of stone that would have been laid into a mosaic floor. And if you come around this way, you'll see that there's another one. Oh yes, they're like little sugar cubes, aren't they? They are just like little sugar cubes. They could be Roman, but they're more likely to be Victorian. Here. Oh, look but at I that. I don't think it's going to be that long. But it's still I quite exciting just watching the extraction, see. though. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, that's a nice one. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. Fantastic. There we go. Another Woo. one for your... For my bag. Your, your bag. <laughs> Let's have a look over here, I think. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So look, you can see the pipe stems in the mud there. Beautiful old nails as well. Lovely old nails. Let's have a look over here. Oh, I just nearly fell, tripped over a pipe. <laughs> and do you know what? You see that pipe step lying up there? I, yeah. I pulled that out of the mud a moment ago without noticing the fault. Well, you've done a pretty good job on the pipes today, though. Yeah, that's good. That's our work. This looks like oh, 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 yes, there. yes, I, I sense from here that there is some stem on it. Oh, oh, <laughs> not bad. Not bad. So I think that's slightly later, yep. but really nice because it works. I love this old mark that yeah. is such a sharp thing down there. Yeah, I like that. And there's probably a nice um, maker on the heel. We were just talking about coins and I suddenly saw one and it's right down there, not too far away from Ted's boot. I think it might be modern. Can you and see it, Ted? I was just telling Nicola that I have coin blindness and <laughs> although I'm almost standing on this coin, I can't see it well, anywhere. I can see it there. It's in, it, it's Give me a, a, okay. a warmer or a colder. It's Something there. Like oh, there you, we go. Yes. Is it 2p? It might be... What is it? Oh, it's no, a it's, it's a halfpenny. Halfpenny. Oh, that's it's lovely, a ship isn't it? Halfpenny. I think it's quite a good halfpenny, actually. Yeah. I think it's 1944. 1944. So, can you just make that out? So, just towards the end of the Second oh, World yes. War. Oh yes. Well, I keep talking about coins, and yeah, then I might I'm, find I will another keep one. Not finding them. So this, it's not much of a pipe, but it's tantalising because it has the maker's name, I think, on it. Let's go rinse it off and see yeah. what see. Most of my regular viewers will know that I love a pipe with a maker on it. Oh, who doesn't love a pipe <laughs> with a maker on it? Let's see. What does it say? I hope it's a name. I hope it's a name, and I hope it's virtual. Do you know what? Oh, oh yes! Deptford! It's Deptford. better than a name, it's a place. Oh, yeah, well, well, it will be the place on that side, and there should be the name on the other side. Yes, yes, there is, you see. Can you read that? Let's have a look. It's, the other it's, way around. I'm sorry, I keep grabbing all your finds out of your hand. I should <laughs> make a note to the viewers that I no longer have any of the pipes that I found today. <laughs> I know, I've just realised I keep taking your They are away all from in you. Nicholas pockets. Um, I'm sure we, we might be able to see it. We can take a photo of it. Yeah, I think um, we're going to have shortly. to. Surely, and then I can look up the maker. I've well, got a few you'd Deptford... you better add this one to your collection of my pipes. Uh, this is nice and old, and I don't know what it is, but I recognise the style. Oh, do you know what? Face. I think I recognise that from my outings with Richard. Henry. I mean, it could possibly be the bottom of one of these German That's what I think. beer mugs or, or vases, I'm not sure. I think sure, a but jug, yeah. Where, yeah. Where are you, the, the sort of pinched place is really yeah. uh, uh, recognisable. Yeah, it really reminds me of that, of the uh, base of one of these German drinking It's lovely, isn't it? Vessels. We will have yeah. to do a bit of research. Absolutely, take and it. And find out you. by the time that this goes out, we will know what it is and how old it is. But I, I would say this is, what? Well, 1600s? Yeah, definitely. 1500s, maybe? Something like that for sure. Really nice and old and lovely. Lovely find. 
Well, everyone, look at our beautiful array of treasures. A mudlark's treasures. Absolutely, a mudlark's treasures. What a, what a trove we have found today, Nicola. We Some have. Amazing just things. look at that. Your it's just such a, a large coins. collection of objects, all of which have such a fascinating history really. So we won't go through everything because the tide is heading right up but there's definitely some things that I want to concentrate on and actually I wonder if you could first just explain these Yes absolutely. So we, we were talking about uh, we found a lot of Delftware today yeah. and so Delftware is predominantly 18th century there's earlier um, but let's say 18th century um, pottery in, in uh, London, it's this sort of pottery, often blue and white, it's called tin glazed earthenware. Um, potters came over from the Netherlands in, I think, uh, 1570s, something like that originally. Um, and it developed before it was, was replaced by um, easier to okay. longer lasting, um, longer lasting pottery. So the way in which they were fired was um, dishes were placed inside a saga, inside a kiln, and a saga was something like this that protected the dish from the smoke of the kiln. And the plates would rest on little triangular pins uh -huh. that sat through here, and then it would sit on that, and it would mean that the there was a tiny amount of exposure between the glaze and the um, and this pin, so they were unlikely to, to fuse to it and get stuck. So really, really nice that we're able to find all three parts of yeah. that pottery process. Brilliant. Thank you for that explanation. I'm going to pop those back there. What else have we got? We've got our favourite sardine tin. These sardines in oil were manufactured by Joseph Penault, who set up his company in Nantes in France in 1844. Nantes was very famous for canning, and the first canning factories were located on Rue de la Ville en Bois, which is where Penault proudly proclaims its locations on the tins. Penault even exhibited his sardines in London in the Great Exhibition of 1851, and the English market was very important for him. In 1872, his son wrote to Joseph, about a rival, Levesque. J'ai remarqué entre autres boîtes de sardines ouvertes la blancheur de celle de Levesque. Si j'étais juré, je lui donnerais la prime. S'il fabrique comme cela pour Londres, il faut redoubler de soins, car il pourrait nous faire tort en Angleterre. In an article in 1900 in the London Express, Penou is considered to epitomise sardines. When the average Englishman feels that a taste of sardine is necessary for the purpose of enjoying life, unless he can get Penou's sardines in oil, he feels mortified. So who enjoyed tucking into this can of Penou's sardines in oil back in the 19th century? We've got these tessera here, yep. uh, pins, Wig curler, wig curler, bangle um, of uncertain date, but mm. nice enough. Loads of pipes. We got loads of pipes. Some of them with makers. I am obviously quite excited about the little bit of stem because it's got the name. It just adds that extra layer of intrigue and, and interest, really, because a tiny stem can lead to the story of a person. So I'm definitely going to be looking them up. Hopefully there's enough letters there that we can find the maker. Very happy with the coins and um, yeah we've got a beautiful selection of treasures. Oh this, um, oh, this yes. ancient bit of pottery that we need to do loads of research in and, um, and find out what it is. We encountered a man today and I'll send you a photograph yeah. Nicola who found the top of a Bartman jug I mean, my dream is to find the face of a Bartman. <laughs> but he found the top of a Bartman jug still with the cork inside. So we found a bottle with a cork in. It's nothing compared to finding a Bartman jug with a cork in. It's a massive cork. We've never seen anything like it in all our, our time hunting on the river, but also not really in the literature. Um, 
So really exciting to see that and I'll, I'll send you a photo so you can yeah. include that in the video. And so what a lot of beautiful treasures and talking of mudlarks treasures. Nicola, I have a book for you. Wow, exciting. And mudlarks treasures. So this is a new edition of my book London in Fragments. We've switched the titles around a little bit and this is to accompany an audio book. Um, I recorded um, reading out a mudlarks treasures. Um, which is going to come out in May. So this is a lovely book to read. It's got lots of pictures oh. of the objects on the inside. Marvellous. Oh, and look, and you've signed it too. Um, I have the previous edition of your book and yes, I right. love it. And I'm often referring to it for information about what I find. And honestly, everybody, if you get the opportunity to purchase this book. Now when is this edition coming out? So this edition is coming out on the 18th of May and so is the audiobook. The audiobook will be on Audible and this is from all good booksellers. Did I hear something about a giveaway? I think you might have heard <laughs> something about a giveaway. So I'm really happy um, my publishers have offered a few books uh, to, Nicola's, um, to Nicola's viewers. So if you would like to get a copy of this for free um, I think the uh, the idea is post a comment in in the in the comments, and a uh, we'll do a sort of lottery thing. Yeah, that's right. So if you would like to be in with a chance to win a copy of Ted's book, and I think we've got three, if you could put down in the comments um, hashtag a mudlarks treasures, and yeah, that's really good. And then um, who knows, you may be in for a chance to win one of these beautiful books. Thanks, Ted. Oh, Nicola, thank you so much for inviting me out today. I have had an absolutely wonderful time. I can't believe how many treasures we found in just a short walk by the River Thames. Me neither. It's amazing, isn't it? It's such an endless source of inspiration, this, this river. It really is. Excellent. Well, here's to the next time. Here's to the next time. Let's hope it isn't too long away.